How's it going, bros? My name is PewDiePie, and I'm back with another audio interface test video for you guys. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the Steinberg UR12, and if you are interested in this interface, it'll set you back between 75 and 80 bucks on Amazon as per usual, link in the description. And for this video, the interface is connected directly to a Mac recording at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. The input gain is set at around 35% and I will do no post processing to this audio, but I may boost it a little in post, so make sure to check the lower turd for more information. And the mic that I'm using is the Rode NT1 because this is almost the exact same setup as PewDiePie. He just uses the UR22 instead of the UR12. And before we get into the review, I do want to include a disclaimer that input one records audio to the left side of your speakers and input two records to the right side of your speakers. So if you want your microphone to come out of both speakers, you will need to set your input to mono. And there are plenty of videos online to help you do that. Now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. Obviously you're gonna get the interface. You get a USB cable. You get a tools for UR12 CD. And if you don't have a CD drive, you can actually download the drivers from Steinberg's website. You get a Cubase download card and you get some documentation. As far as the build quality, this thing feels absolutely amazing. It has an all aluminum chassis. The dials on the front are really nicely attached and not loose at all. And the inputs don't move around either. Now let's go ahead and walk through all the buttons and inputs and everything on the interface. On the front, the first thing you will find is the input one gain control, which controls the volume of the XLR input. Next, you obviously find the XLR input, which is the only input that gets the 48 volts of phantom power. Next, you'll find a quarter inch or 6.3 millimeter high Z input. Then you'll find the gain control for that quarter inch input. Next, you'll find the output volume dial, which controls the RCA output on the back, as well as the headphone output on the front. Then you have a direct monitor button, which turns on or off the zero latency monitoring. Then you have the quarter inch or 6.3 millimeter headphone port. And the last thing you will find on the front is a set of four lights. The first one is a peak indicator for input one. So if your signal is clipping, this light will turn on. Then you have the phantom power indicator, which just tells you that the 48 volts of phantom power is turned on. Then you have the peak indicator light for input two. So if this input is clipping, this light will turn on. And then you have the USB light just to tell you that it is plugged into a computer and working. On the back of the interface, you will find a five volt USB input for an external power supply or a mobile battery bank you'll find a switch which allows you to switch between the external power source or the USB 2.0 power. Then you'll find the USB port which will allow you to connect this interface to your computer. You have a set of RCA outputs which allows you to connect to this interface to a set of powered stereo monitors or an amplifier. And lastly, you have the 48 volts phantom power on or off switch. As far as specs, this thing has a bit depth of 24 bit, a sampling rate of 44.1 through 192 kilohertz, a plus 48 volts phantom power supply, an input one gain range of plus 10 decibels through plus 54 decibels, and an input two gain range of plus zero decibels through plus 40 decibels. And here's a quick look at the voltage that we are getting from channel one. We're getting around 48 and a half volts. So this should work with any condenser microphone that requires 48 volts of phantom power. Okay, so now I'm gonna shut up, drop the input gain down to 0% and slowly increase it. So you can hear what kind of background noise is generated by this interface's preamp. 25%. 30%. 75% and 100% so now in my Gibson Les Paul studio which has passive pickups plugged into input 2 with the input gain set at 0% I'm showing you the meters on Logic Pro X. Now I'll just go ahead and strum my guitar really quickly to show you what kind of levels we're hitting. So as you could see, we were getting extremely close to clipping, even though I have a guitar with passive pickups and the input gain is set at 0%. So if you're gonna be recording with any kind of instrument with active pickups, you may run into some serious clipping issues. So overall, I think this is a pretty nice interface for the price. I really like the amount of gain that it offers channel one. I thought the noise floor was pretty good all the way up to around 85%. And I really like the fact that it records all the way up to 192 kilohertz. But the 
one issue I do have with this interface is the clipping issue on channel two. But if you're just gonna be using this interface to connect a microphone, I don't think that should hold you back. All right, guys, well, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, give me a thumbs down. If you want more, go ahead and subscribe by clicking the logo beneath me. And also, don't forget to vote for the microphones that you want reviewed next, as well as follow me on all the social media stuff. Links to everything in the description down below. I'll see y'all next time, bros.